can go in, honey. <laughs> She's like, it's hitting me in the back. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're so silly. Alright, so I want to kind of just do a quick intro to part two of this month's vlog. Also want to clarify that next month I'm not going to be doing this because keeping track of what I've already talked about what I've recorded, what I've said I'm reading in the vlog, blah blah blah. It's just impossible for me to keep track of. So next month I'm gonna do more of like a, a like the two books that I'm reading in the week or something like that. Anyways, um, what I am going to be reading throughout the course of this vlog are three specific books, one of which I was already reading in the first vlog, which is Urban Drama. Um, I am actually getting really close to finishing it now. I have officially decided to consider it more of a biography than anything else. I was having a hard time with this book because there are many aspects to it, aspects, <laughs> aspects to it that are very like personal. Like you can clearly tell that the author is um, stating her opinion, her own personal life, many many times, and as someone who um, did a lot of like research papers for college I had a very I had very strong opinions towards people who were trying to write a book that was uh, informational something that is educational and then inserting their own like clearly very subjective opinions so I have decided to read this more as a personal biography than anything else the next book is eight perfect murders I already started it um, and I said that in the last uh, vlog post. I'm almost done with it. My library book club group is going to be meeting up soon, so that's why I'm trying to get through it pretty quickly. So there might not be a whole lot of vlog posts about this one because I actually want to meet with my book club group first before I actually talk about the book in itself. Kind of just to get other people's views on what they thought, maybe some insights and things like that, and then share on the vlog what they talked about too. The last book that I'll be talking about, or rather reading during this vlog, is V.E. Schwab's The Near Witch. This is a YA book. I'm not usually a fan of YA, but I do really like V.E. Schwab and her writing style, so I decided to borrow this one from my library. I have not started it yet. Um, the vlog is probably most primarily going to be about this book. Again, this vlog that I'm doing is very, very messy. Next month is going to be hopefully much more organized. So yeah, this is just kind of my intro to vlog part number two for this mess that I'm making. All right, don't mind the, the nasty bowl. Um, I thought I wa would um, mention that I got uh, fake nails to like glue onto my nails, obviously, and I, you know, I knew that they probably wouldn't work, and they definitely didn't, like, my, they didn't stick at all, right? They all popped off. They're not on there. Except one. This one will not come off. It's on my thumb, and it does not want to leave. So I have one fake nail on, and it won't come off. It hurts if I try to pull it off or, like, pop it off or something. So... Yeah, I had a bunch of fake nails that left me with this glue shit. They kept popping off and this guy will not leave. <laughs> I need to take care of my dead plants. This guy? These are still green. Is it growing back? No, it's definitely not. It's dead. I have to take care of this one. I repotted it and everything trying to like save it. That didn't work out. Then I have this guy who's definitely dead. Oh, jeez. He's very dead. I tried. I really did try. Um, it looks like there's mold, so I guess I overwatered it, but I remember, like, barely watering it for a while, so, yeah. So I'm gonna go take care of my plants now and probably end up going to- because I made a deal with Ryan. I am not allowed 
to buy any more live plants. Only fake plants. <laughs> Everything else dies on me. Alright, I've been walking around looking for like a shovel so I can empty this, but mm, something to know is my house is a mess. Especially outside because it's foreclosured, or it was foreclosured when we bought it, and it was really gross. There was a bunch of trash all over the place inside the house too, and we haven't really cleared out most of it. On top of that, I live with two mechanics, so shit piles up. And I was told that the shovel was here. And it might be. But I also don't want to find out if there's also a giant bug under all this stuff. We have to, we really have to like throw this stuff away someday. I don't know where that shovel is. Whatever. Oh, oh, there it is. Found it for you. Look at that. Oh, you found it for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you definitely found it for me. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any fake plants at Job Lot, but I did get, well, you know, dog treats, dog toy, and a plastic cauldron. I'm pretty happy about that, but now, now I need to do like online shopping, and I'm also waiting for Ryan and Chris to finish up with their whatever they need for cars and mechanical things. <laughs> I have wonderful news. Oh my god, what is wrong with my hair? It came off. It came off. I think I, ooh, yeah. Oh, is that glue? That better be glue. I hope that's not my nail. <laughs> All right, so it's me and the puppy right now. Um, could do a little update on the reading. So I finished um, Urban Trauma. I I, li I actually I liked how the book ended, how it wrapped up everything that it was um, talking about on the issue of um, 
racism and kind of, you know, living in an urban setting and all that. I think it was really nice at the end. It kind of had a lot of, like, how to help yourself and how to help people around you who suffer from these traumatic experiences and from this lifestyle. So I really did like that. Then I started uh, The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab. Um, I was a little worried that I wasn't going to like it, uh, mainly because it is a young adult book. I think it's actually even a middle grade book. I'm not entirely sure, but I was worried I wasn't going to like it because I typically don't like young adult or middle grade, except when they are the kind of stories that are like Gregor the Overlander, where it's basically a kid that, against all odds, um, is just like an exceptional character. And that's what I'm feeling with Near Witch right now. I'm about 80-ish pages in. And so far, so the story is um, this young girl, Lexi, lives in a place called Near. And in this place, they have this sort of fairy tale that's meant to scare kids about a witch, the Near Witch. Um, and so that tale kind of goes around and it seems to be pretty important part of the book and will probably influence it. But this stranger has arrived in the t their town of Near, which never happens. So it's very strange. Now, Lexi is the type of girl who does not conform, which I really love. I think she's about 16 in the book. And around this age, she's supposed to, you know, dress really nice, um, be the cliched woman who can sew and cook and all that stuff. And she doesn't. She grabs her dad's boots. She has a knife. She wears pants, like all that stuff. I really like her. She's quite the um, headstrong girl. And she is essentially trying to find this stranger. So problem with that is that her uncle is very unhappy with her. And this dynamic between her and her uncle is very interesting. The mom so far is also intriguing. Like she seems very passive, very like neutral, um, almost like absent because so Alexi's dad died. So her husband died. And it kind of feels like, you know, the, the mom who detached because she lost her husband. Um, but yeah, so far that's basically what the story is. Is a stranger comes, no one knows who he is, where he's from, what he is. And Lexi is trying to find him first before her uncle does. Because her uncle is, I guess, his role is the protector of their town. And she's worried that I guess maybe he'll kill him. So... That's the story so far, and I'm interested. It, it gives off very, like, fairy tale vibes, but I, I have this feeling it's going to get dark. Um, the writing style is very different from um, A Darker Shade of Magic and Vicious. It's The prose is actually very nice, um, very lyrical, I'd almost say. I'm really enjoying it so far, so I'm actually going to keep reading, which is why I'm on the couch. I totally forgot to do another update after the book club thing. So the book club went really well. It was really nice outside. Uh, a little too hot. The sun was in my eyes. So next time, I'm not going to sit there. Um, I thought it was really fun. Um, everyone in the club had like some different opinions on the book, but we all generally had the same ideas. So that was nice, and there will be future book clubs, so I'm pretty excited about that. I'll always add them to my TBR and see what happens. Um, another update, I finished The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, so I finally finished the audiobook. Um, I wasn't too impressed with the ending. I feel like the ending kind of dragged on a little bit and in a way like a justice was done but not the justice you would have wanted which I guess kind of makes this allusion to reality where even if you catch the bad guy doesn't mean you get justice for it. Um, so there was that. I did overall really enjoy The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I think it was uh, much more politically oriented and 
pretty detailed when it comes down to just uh, interpersonal relationships and the kind of atrocities and violence that can happen in the world. Also the way people treat other people when they don't understand them. Um, so I did like the book for that. Then final update on The Near Witch, which I'm currently reading, which is why I was like, oh wait, I should probably do a quick little update. Um, so I'm basically halfway through the book now. I'm not enjoying it as much. The reason I'm not enjoying it as much is because now there's this, like, relationship in the book, and I'm just not buying it. It's kind of one of those, like, oh, two characters, might as well make them hook up, right? Instead of continuing with the plot, the actual story that's going on, and then, like, building their relationship progressively. So I'm not too happy about that in this book. It really does feel like, and this is my own opinion, obviously, but it really does feel like those cheap YA, like, relationships that bud because, oh, we are fighting a similar cause and thus we love each other or we like each other. It's like, you don't even know each other, though. But yeah, so um, I will update again once I'm finished with The Near Witch. I actually think I might finish it pretty soon, so I'll probably end up reading another book for the month. I probably won't vlog it though, just make it like a surprise at the end of the month when I do my wrap up, so we'll see. Anyways, I'm gonna read a little bit more and then head to bed. Alright, it is the end of this month's vlog and I finished The Near Witch. So let me go ahead and talk about my whole experience reading the Near Witch by the e. Schwab. First of all, I had to return it today because um, it was almost overdue and I borrowed it from another library and I don't, I don't know, I feel like when I was a kid if I borrowed a book but then the library had to borrow from another library, even if I returned it the day of it being due, the other library wouldn't receive it on that day and so it would be considered like overdue or something. Anyways, so I quickly returned it so I don't have the physical book on me anymore. Um, so The Near Witch. The Near Witch is basically the... It's a very simple story about a town called Near and a young girl who... Uh, she's about 16 and she spots out of her window one night a stranger that is outside her window. She has a young sister, her mom, her dad passed away and she has an uncle that basically is taking care of them right now. So something to know about the town of Nier is that, um, or even like the whole universe of the book, is that witches are a thing but no one really wants to believe it. So they have an old story about the Nier witch who was a witch who lived in Nier and who, well, was killed because she was accused of killing a child. But so they have this uh, song, you know, like a um, what do they call them? Um, oh, 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 they're called like n nursery rhymes. Nursery rhymes. So it's like a nursery rhyme, uh, the Near Witch song, and kids sing it and they like run around in a circle or something. And so there are other witches too, but again, like they don't really believe it. Like they know, but they don't really believe it. Like they don't want to accept it. And uh, what happens in the book is that kids are starting to disappear. And because a stranger just came to Nier and that never happens, they are accusing the stranger. So the whole story is basically about our main character, Lexi, who is trying to prove that the stranger is actually not taking the children and that it is a witch. It's magic, right? But the whole town doesn't really believe in that stuff anymore. So like, no, 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 it's definitely the stranger, right? Um, this whole story was very... To me, like, it had a very dark mood, like, the town in itself is set in the moors. I always pictured it kind of very dark, very gloomy. Not a lot of people live in that town. They're all very close-knit, but they're also very close-minded. And essentially, this girl who has a very strong personality, I loved Lexi. She had such a strong personality, such a character that's just like, nah, screw these rules. I'm gonna wear pants and I'm gonna carry my dad's knife around and wear boots and go out in the middle of the night. I don't care about your rules. And so she's kind of fighting against her uncle. But you never really get this sense of like, how would you say it? Like, it's not so much about 
it being like women oppression, I guess. Because it was mentioned a lot where she, Lexi, would say like, what, you won't let me go out because I'm a girl? And it was never really that. Like, it was mostly with her uncle. He, She would butt heads with her uncle a lot. And, um, like, I think she wanted it to be because she was a girl. But I feel like her uncle was really just protecting her because, well, she lost her dad. And there's no one really there to protect the family. So he felt the need to. Um, so let's kind of go into the adults of this story. Near Witch is a YA fantasy. I'd almost say that it's like very young YA but then again not I don't really know where to place it I also don't read YA very often I'm not a huge fan of it and this book had the same elements that I'm not a huge fan of but let's talk about the adults first um like in many YA books the adults are kind of sidelined or I wouldn't say villainized but almost so like the counselor or the council of the village are essentially just old dudes who will never change. Her uncle is portrayed as being this, um, you know, macho, sexist, um, essentially, like, brutish kind of guy who tries to, you know, restrict her. Her mom is portrayed as essentially being, like, a ghost. Like, she doesn't really do anything. And that's something I was really upset about. So that would be the the first point that I really didn't like about this book is how much her mom is portrayed as being like kind of useless. You think she's going to be because she always seems to help Lexi a little bit, right? And you think that at some point she's going to come out and do something extraordinary and really step up and be like a really awesome side character, but she never does. Even at the end of the book, you're just like, really, lady? Like nothing out of you. Um, the next thing that I didn't really like so much about this book was the romance. <laughs> Listen, I'm not a romance person from the start. Now, here's the thing about it is that I know some people complain about books that drag something on for so long and then they finally hook up. I still prefer that because that shows me like they are getting along. They're learning to know each other. They get into arguments. They start hating each other. Then they like each other again. Like that builds relationships. But books where two people have no idea about each other. Hell, one of the characters, you don't even get to know his real name. And yet they get together and you're just like, what? How? Why? And like, I mean, there's clearly more pressing matters here. There are children disappearing and you think now is a great time to like form a new relationship and trust each other with all your heart even though you don't know each other no that's completely unrealistic and i don't like those i genuinely don't like those i really wish there hadn't been a romance because lexi was such a strong character i really wish there hadn't been a romance now the other thing i will say is that the romance didn't bother me too much because lexi stayed very consistent a big problem I often have is that once there is a romance, you know, if especially if it's male-female relationship, oftentimes the female character becomes less of what she was. Which means if she was a very strong, independent character, once the male partner comes in, um, suddenly this female protagonist becomes, like, less capable on her own. But that didn't happen, which I was really happy about. So Lexi stays pretty consistent throughout the whole story, where she is stubborn, she does it her way, or it's the highway. She, you know, she has emotions too. Like, she's afraid and she's not a, like, she's not worried to admit that. And she will still fight through it though. And I really, really love that. And then another thing I did enjoy, I kind of already touched on it, was the setting. The setting was so very, uh, like, dark and ominous kind of the way that I would picture, it's very strange, but the way I pictured the setting was, um, because I'm a very uh, visual person, so while I'm reading, I actually, I almost like picture the whole book as a movie. I don't know if everyone experiences it like that, but the way I pictured the setting was, uh, you know where those, oh, what is it called? Those rocks somewhere in, um, in England. Shit, what is it called? I pictured the setting to be um, kind of like the Stonehenge area kind of thing where there are these like vast expanses of open space, moors, 
and still like forests nearby like that's kind of what I imagined and it's always cloudy and always dark and I really did enjoy that kind of setting I also really enjoyed the folklorish um, side of it with the witches and how they used to live with people I feel like I haven't read a lot of books that have that sort of vibe so I really did enjoy that I feel like I would have probably enjoyed this book a lot more if it had been adult fantasy or adult fiction but overall I'm really glad I read it so if you enjoyed this video please like subscribe press the bell too that actually helps the most and if you have anything you want to say feel free to drop it in the comments if you'd like to find me anywhere else I have links down below yeah thanks for watching bye